Hey, how's it going? Hey, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So I would like to discuss today the physical and psychological advantages of doing a takedown jiu-jitsu tournament. Doesn't matter if it's a point tournament, doesn't matter if it's submission only. This is why I recommend you do takedowns. Number one, it gives you a psychological advantage. So, you know, a takedown is usually only worth two points in a tournament that has points. And in some tournaments, it's worth zero points. So, if you expend a lot of energy on a takedown and you end up in your opponent's guard, you're not really helping, you're not really doing yourself that much good. You're not helping yourself that much, especially in a tournament where there's no points. Say your opponent wants to put you in guard, you literally just wasted energy getting into your opponent's guard. That's exactly what just happened. You put all that effort in and you're in your opponent's guard. So first thing I'm gonna recommend is that if you do do a takedown, make sure you're either really good at passing, so you're not gonna be in that guard, or that you land in side control. That way you're gonna avoid that potential advantage you're giving your opponent from you doing the takedown. Let me just, like, like right, you right there. Yeah, you. Yeah, you see. Good you, good you. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so here's a psychological advantage to it. When you take someone down, whether you power through it or use good technique, obviously I prefer you to use good technique because when you use good technique, you're saving energy. So even if you do land your opponent's guard, it's still not even that big of a disadvantage. of anything, it's neutral. But... When you take your opponent down, you're using your physicality. You're showing them that you either have good enough technique or you're powerful enough to take that match where you want it to be. That can be a really powerful thing in someone's head. Just think about it. You're on a mat, and no matter what you do, you're going to be in a position that that person wants you in. It can be disheartening. So that's the number one psychological advantage. It shows them that you're dominating them. It shows them that you can put them where you want them, whenever you want them. With that being said, if your opponent blocks your takedown, then that's not going to give you that advantage. Say you shoot five takedowns, you only get one out of five, then you, you're still probably not going to get that psychological advantage because they know that they blocked most of your takedowns. So this advantage is mostly for if your takedown is way better than your takedown defense. Also, some Jiu Jitsu guys have literally zero takedown defense, so even if you take them down, it's not going to affect them psychologically. They're not really going to care. Now, let me talk to you about the physical advantage of getting a takedown in Jiu Jitsu match. Doesn't matter if it's a point match, doesn't matter if it's submission only, you can still get a physical advantage taking your opponent down. Because whenever you do take them down, first of all, you have to hit the mat. That could be kind of painful to someone. You might knock the breath out of them. And let's say if you land in someone's guard, you take them down. Perhaps they have a good guard retention. That second that that breath's knocked out of them, they're not going to be able to get their legs up around you or keep their legs around. So it might make you be able to pass that guard in like less than a second. Don't rely on that at all. Have good technique so you don't land in guard. But if you did, that is one thing right there. Another physical advantage is energy. So going against a jiu-jitsu guy is not really the same. If you go against a wrestler doing jiu-jitsu, a lot of the time they're going to get up their back or try to get back up to their feet. They're not really going to try to submit you from bottom. Not often, unless they're really round rounded. So say you take someone down, them giving up their back is going to give you a better position or them getting back to their feet is going to be them wasting energy. Obviously, you might as well have wasted energy too getting them to the mat, but you know what I mean. Maybe waste energy isn't the best word. Use energy, because again, if you do your takedown with really good technique, you're not going to be using much energy. A takedown is almost like a sweep starting from standing if you do it if you do it properly, you don't have to muscle it. You just find the right angle and go. And I could talk about that in another video. So here's the biggest physical advantage of getting a takedown. You are going to be on top. Again, if you're in guard, this is not going to be the same. So maybe half guard. You can kind of do this in half guard, but this is mostly side control and mount. You could ride your opponent out. You use less energy holding them there. You got to learn how to get heavy hips. You got to learn how to be heavy and stuff. Hold up, hold up, just a moment. All right, so hopefully it's not confusing. I just stopped the video where it was so I could make a little comment right there. So I just said that you need to learn how to get heavy hips. That is good. But alternatively and preferably if you have both of these, it's better if you have uh, light hips as well so you can float. If you don't know what that is, look into it. Ask your coach about what it means to be floating on top of your opponent. Anyone who could switch between heavy hips and floating hips is going to have an extremely powerful, diligent, very good top game. Me personally, I don't know how to float. That's something maybe I could work on in the future. But yes, if you know how to float on top of your opponent instead or alongside with knowing how to have heavy hips, you are going to be unstoppable. But you use less energy staying on top than they do surviving. Them trying to prevent you from submitting you, them trying to work to a better position, them trying to get their guard back, trying to stand back up, trying to sweep you is going to use way more energy than you 
trying to keep that position if you're doing it properly with good technique. So make sure you practice that. So yeah, those are reasons right there, psychological and physical advantages of getting a takedown. So I highly recommend that if you're a grappler going to a submission competition, whether it's points or no points, you strongly consider takedowns. Thank you very much.